Hello, biochemistry friends. This is Dr. Bauer Phipps. I'm going to walk you how you can insert genes into plasmids. Basically, we're going to be combining all of the steps that we've been learning about so far. So our understanding of plasmids and of restriction enzymes and of all kinds of fun things. So for this assignment, you're going to want to have access to the PET28A vector map or plasmid map. So you have a PDF of that. Um, on this uh, assignment. And you also have access to this homework file um, that has some links that you're going to need. So let me walk you through this PET20A vector map. So you can see that it's a, a family of vectors, a family of plasmids, um, and they're used specifically to put a His tag, an N-terminal His tag on a protein um, of interest. So this is a way that scientists can purify a lot of the same protein by using this his tag technology. We didn't talk about it, but you can Google it. It's awesomeness. Um, but this vector map looks very similar to what we've been um, looking at for our previous assignment. So notice that we have our title here. We have the number of base pairs that are right there in the middle. And there are a couple of things that I want to bring your attention to here. There's an origin of replication over here. There's a um, another origin over here in case you wanted to put it into a different species. So you have two different origins of replication that can be used with this plasmid. The CAN gene here is our canamycin resistance. That is a type of antibiotic. So this is a way that you can maintain the plasmid in a bacteria or other organism. There's also the area over here that you see is a LAC one operator. This is an inducible promoter. You'll learn more about um, the LAC operon uh, next week. And then finally up here, you see this big black arrow there. That's the most important part of this plasmid because it has the multiple cloning site. The, so cloning just means that we're going to make a copy of a gene and put it into another piece of DNA. And the way that we're going to do that is using these cut and paste enzymes, uh, the restriction enzymes that we've been talking about. So this is a list of all of the restriction enzymes that we can use. And I want you to notice that this has a direction. Not all these directions are the same. This arrow is going counterclockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise clockwise. It just depends on which strand of the double-stranded DNA of the plasmid um, it's using. So these ones go in a specific direction, and because these are the most important part, there's a zoomed-in part down here on the bottom of the plasmid map. So what this does is it tells us that the promoter and operator are here. So the promoter says, let's turn this gene on or off. Um, the LAC operator, again, you'll learn more about these operators and operons next week. And then you see here there are a list of, in these italicized um, bits, those are the restriction enzymes that can be used. So notice that they go in order. So NCO1, NDE1, NHE1. NCO1, NDE1, NHE1. These go in order. Here they're going bottom to top because it's going this direction on the plasmid. This is putting in a direction that we read left to right. So this side represents the five prime end of this strand. It's just showing one strand of DNA, but the other strand you can find easily. And the end here, this would be the three prime end. A couple of other things that I want to bring your attention to are the RBS, that's the ribosome binding site. This is not another important thing to have in your plasmid backbone because otherwise, once you can make the RNA, so you can make the RNA by having a promoter and an operator, so that tells RNA polymerase, make this mRNA, please. But once the mRNA is, is made, unless you have a ribosome binding site, the ribosome doesn't know that it's supposed to translate it and make it into a protein. So this RBS ribosome binding site is also important. So I'm going to draw your attention to the part down here where you have a cluster of restriction enzymes in a row. BAMH1, ECOR1, SAC1, SAL1, HIND3, NOT1, and XHO1. EAG1 is also there and it overlaps with NOT1, but their sequences are slightly different. So what I've done is I've made a copy of just this section of the of the plasmid. You can see underneath that this is definitely the translated part. Right after the ribosome binding site, you can see that we start with the ATG, that's the start codon. So you can see that this is what it's telling the ribosome to start making if you're uh, making this protein in cells. But we're going to pay attention to these lines down here, just this line right here from BAMH1 to XHO1. And what I've done is I've copied and pasted this 
sequence into your homework document so you have access to it here. But because the formatting is a little bit different, even though I put in the restriction sites um, and underline them, it's not as clear as it is in this map. So you have access to the BAM H1 site, which is GGATCC, ECOR1, which is GAATTC. I couldn't make the formatting look quite as nice here. So you can switch back and forth to both of those things. So for this assignment, you're going to be putting in uh, a yeast gene into this vector using these uh, restriction enzymes in the multiple cloning site. So I'm going to walk you through one example and then have you do a couple more. But remember, you're using this fresh sequence every time. Don't put it into the one that you've already made. So use this as a fresh sequence every time. And remember that um, this goes from the five prime to three prime direction. So when you're putting in a gene into a plasmid and you know that you're going to use restriction enzymes to clone it, first you want to make sure that the enzymes that you choose don't cut in the middle of your gene. Otherwise, instead of putting in the whole gene, you're just going to be putting in part of it. So you need to get the gene sequence. All of our examples are going to come from yeastgenome.org. So I'm going to open up that yeast genome. And the only reason that I'm using the yeast genome is because it's easy to search and it's the one that I used in grad school. And so that's just easy. Sorry. Um, the example that we're going to be using is KIN4, K-I-N-4. So I'm going to type in this box, K-I-N-4, and look up this gene. So when I search for KIN4, it gives me this protein product. But I really want its DNA. So I'm going to look for sequence and then go down here to find the genomic DNA sequence. And I wanna make sure that this sequence isn't cut by any of these restriction enzymes. But I don't wanna look or search. And because of the spaces in it, it's hard to search. Like if I were just gonna search for GGATCC, it doesn't, because of these breaks, it's not gonna tell me very much if I just use the, the find feature of a browser or, um, anything else. So to make sure that it doesn't cut anywhere in it, I'm going to look in this program here. So this is from New England Biolabs, which is the company that sells the restriction enzymes. And you can paste in your DNA sequence here. So what I'm going to do is go from the very beginning, from gene one, or from nucleotide one, all the way to the very end. And I'm going to copy and paste this into here. And then it doesn't matter if it has the numbers in it, it's fine. Um, and then I'm gonna hit submit. And what that does is it gives me, um, my gene is 800 amino acids long or 2403. You wanna make sure that this number matches 2403. This goes to 2401, 2402, 2403. It needs to match <laughs> the whole total, otherwise you didn't cut and paste the whole thing. So this gives us a little overview of where those restriction enzymes could cut in the gene. But the most important thing we want to do is make sure that these ones do not cut in it. So the first part of this is which restriction sites are not able to be used for this gene. So that means that um, I want to check and see if BAM H1 can cut it and ECO R1 and SAC H1. So the easiest way is to actually look for zero cutters, because enzymes that don't cut this sequence are able to be used. So I'm actually going to modify this. So one moment. All right. So I'm looking for two things. Which enzymes can be used uh, because the it does not cut the gene, or the enzyme cannot be used because it does cut the gene? So I'm looking for, first I'm going to look for BAMH1. And this one looking for they're in alphabetical order bam h1 is listed here and it does not cut so it does not cut the gene so bam h1 bam h1 can be used all right the next one i'm checking is eco r1 so i'm going to scroll down to find eco r1 eco r1 is not listed because eco r1 is not listed that means it does cut the gene so eco r1 Eco R1 cannot be used because it does cut the gene. Now let's check SAC1. SAC1. SAC1 is here. It does not cut the gene, so SAC1 can be used. SAC1 can be used. What am I looking for next? SAL1, S-A-L1. SAL1 is not there. 
So that means it does cut, SAL1 does cut the gene. So I'm going to put SAL1 here. Cannot use SAL1. Okay. HIND3, HIND3, HIND3. Looks like HIND3 does cut the gene, so I can't use that. So HIND3 does cut the gene. Cannot use that one. What's next? Not one. N-O-T-1. Yep, not one does not cut the gene. Not one. Not one. Okay. And then next I'm looking for X-H-O-1. X-H-O-1 is not there, so I cannot use X-H-O-1. X-H-O-1 cannot use. Whew. That's a lot. I can't use. It's a good thing I look for this. So BAM H1, SAC1, and NOT1. BAM H1, SAC1, and NOT1 can all be used. Okay, so now let's take a look. Now that we know which ones can do it, so we got the gene sequence. We made sure that it does not cut the gene. Check. Now we're going to put them in the correct orientation. So because this gene, so I'm going to cut and paste this down here. This gene goes in the five prime to three prime direction. Um, so the enzyme for the five prime, I want to use the one that goes on the five prime of this. So the five prime end, I'm going to use BAM H1. And on the three prime end of my gene, I can either use SAC1 or NOT1. And since NOT1 is a big one, I'm just going to use SAC1 here, SAC1 here. Okay. So now the final plasmid sequence, I need to figure out where in BAM H1, because I have the, I know that it's GGA TCC, but I don't remember where the break happens with our BAM H1 gene. So I'm just going to show one strand here um, of what the final plasmid sequence will be. Okay, so BAM H1. Um, to find out where that cuts, remember I can go back to neb.com and look up the sequence for BAM, oops, BAM H1. And it cuts right after this G. So G blank G-A-T-C-C. So G space G-A-T-C-C. And SAC1, let's look up the SAC1. SAC1, SAC1 cuts at GAGCT cut C. GAGCT cut. So here's my GAGCT cut C. So that's what's going to be there. But I want to make sure, hmm, what I want to do is make sure that I'm putting in that little cut there, cut there. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm including in the whole restriction enzyme site. So BAM H1 was GGA TCC. So I want that and then my gene, and then the SAC1 was, what was the SAC1? GAGCTC. GAGCTC, there's my SAC1. So eco R1, this spot in between the, the end of the BAM H1 restriction site, so this is my, oops. This is my BAM H1 restriction site, showing where the cut is going to be made. This is my SAC1 restriction enzyme site, and that's showing where the cut is going to be made. I need to include the gene in here, but I'm just going to show the first 10 and the last 10 of the gene. So I'm going to show like these first 10. So the 5 prime of the gene is going to go near the 5 prime restriction enzyme site. So I'm going to put in a little space there to show that that's where my gene is going in, and I'll reformat in a second. This is going to come out because I'm going to get rid of that part of it. 
So this is my, um, I'm going to show that this is my kin4 gene, right? Kin4 gene is going there. This is my SAC1 restriction site, but I need the end of that kin4 gene. I'm going to choose the last 10 nucleotides here. So there's three there, so I need seven from this line. Copy and paste. Kin4 gene. And I want all that on the same line. Okay, those are my last. And so I'm going to show this in italics to show that this is my gene. And make it black and make all of these the same size. I'm going to put all of these on the same line. So here's my and I'm going to put that right up next to the cut site there. Can it fit on one line? Not really. So the other restriction sites, the other restriction sites are still there, but the ECOR1 site is not. When we put in our gene, we took out the ECOR1 site. So I'm going to respace this. This is my SAC1. Um, and you can see how this goes right up next to the, the gene that we want. So if we were making a, a PCR primer for this gene, our BAMH1 site would go right next to that gene, and our SAC1 site would go right next to the 3' prime end of that gene. So hopefully this was helpful and not too confusing. I know that it's confusing, so send me an email if you need some help. I'm happy to walk you through or give you some hints. The reason that this homework is has so many days to work on is because it's a complicated one. So good luck. Um, this is what I'm looking for at the end, right? I want to know which enzymes can and cannot be used. Um, choose an enzyme at the five prime end and a three prime end so that it lines up with how it works on the five prime end of the plasmid and the three prime end of the plasmid. And so that it matches up with the five prime end of your gene and the three prime end of your gene. Good luck and uh, let me know how I can help. Thanks everybody.